and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jennifer, and today we're gonna to be doing some mini reviews and updates. Mini reviews are gonna be on some new products, including the Dior Forever Cushion Powder in Lavender. So if you're interested in seeing that and seeing what else I have on tap for today, just stay tuned. Hey everyone, so today, like I said, we're gonna do some mini reviews and some updates. I've got some new products, um, the Forever Dior Forever Cushion Powder in Lavender. I have the Dolce & Gabbana Royal Gloss Shine Lip Plumper. I'm gonna use it in this gold shade. I'm also gonna use the Chanel Ombres, the Bouquet Ombre, which was the spring collection that, that did not unfortunately come to the US. Um, but I'm also gonna incorporate some stuff that we have seen before, but I'm gonna give you some updates on those. So let's go ahead and dive in. Pulling the hair back, of course. Okay, so first I'm gonna use my By Terry Balm de Rose. I'm gonna need more of this. And then we're gonna use the Tom Ford Emotion Proof uh, Eye Primer. I really have been liking this and I've continued to use it. As I said in my last uh, mini review and update video. If you're looking for something that's gonna give you like longevity, if you have oily eyelids, this is not, I, I don't think it's the right product for you. But if you have drier skin or more mature or both, um, and you're looking for something that will give you a nice smooth canvas, I think this is a really good product. And I like it because it kind of creates a barrier for my skin. My eyes uh, and my eyelids are very sensitive. So, and especially sensitive lately. I don't know what's happening. Um, but anyway, so I really think it's, it's a really good product. You'll probably notice my skin has been very um, rosacea prone lately. I think partially it's the dry um, air and the fact that it's winter and it's cold, but also because for over a year now, I have not had any laser treatments. And so what I was usually getting done was a procedure called Clear and Brilliant. It's a it's a low lower level laser. Um, and I got it done like twice a year. And it reduces redness and helps with, I mean, it helps with collagen and wrinkles and that kind of stuff. But really, I used it for keep down the, the broken uh, capillaries and redness to my skin. And it, it really, I, I think it worked really well. Those things come back though over time. And it's been, I don't know, 16 to 18 months actually. It's been longer than a year. So um, I think that's why my skin is, is looks more red, but I am gonna try to do a, uh, a laser treatment sometime soon. I feel, I'm feeling a little more comfortable about going out. So, I mean, I go out, but you, you know what I mean? Like, cause I won't be able to wear a mask cause they're gonna have to do my whole face. Um, okay, so we're gonna use the Cushion Dior. This is the Prestige Cushion uh, Tent de Rose. I have it in 012. This is the Cushion Foundation. It is a very limited, very limited um, shade range, but I wanted to give you an update on this foundation. Um, I really like it, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah, it works. it works really well for me. It gives me um, very good coverage, lasts all day. I think it looks beautiful on the skin. It's excellent for uh, more mature skin. I still hate the smell. I think it smells like flowers, which I, I don't understand why you need that in a foundation. Um, but I love the foundation. I think it looks really beautiful on. It looks a little bit light at first when I first put it on, but that I don't know if it's oxid. I don't know if it oxidizes or it's just that's the way the foundation works. Like it goes on a little bit lighter and then it warms up. I'm not sure, but um, it, it looks it looks really good throughout the day. Um, it feels very comfortable. Uh, it's very hydrating. It's a beautiful foundation. I actually feel like my skin feels better uh, after wearing it for a little while. So I really really like it. Um, my issues with it are uh, you know there's a couple. Um, one, it smells like flowers, which I don't like. Uh, it does have SPF 50, which is great. Um, it has 12 month shelf life. There doesn't seem to be a lot of product in here, but it's like a typical cushion. There's not a separate cushion. I think it's refillable. 
Um, I hope it's refillable so that you can just, you know, put in a new cushion and you don't have to pay for the compact. Um, the shade, lamp, or shade range is extremely limited and I bought this, I believe on Selfridges, Selfridges? I think so. Um, so I haven't even, I don't think I've even seen this in the US. So all of those things are the negative. The actual foundation itself, I am very fond of and I think it looks great. The only drawback to the foundation itself is the smell. I just, I don't like, I don't mind a scent in my foundation but I wanted to dissipate quickly and this one does not. It's, it's still there. <laughs> it still smelled. And if it's going to be, it has to be a scent I really like. And I know this sounds hypocritical because I like the meteorites and that's violet, but this is different. This is a different scent. Um, I think they said it was supposed to be like roses, but it doesn't, it doesn't smell like roses to me. It smells like something else. Anyway, we won't, uh, we won't belabor that point. Um, okay, so then I wanna give you an update on the Salt New York um, cream products. I am in love with this brand. I don't know why I didn't use it before other than I, I have a lot of makeup and I just, I don't know. Uh, it's really good. The, the products are excellent. Um, they work extremely well on the skin. They look beautiful on. They are sheer, um, which for me works extremely well, because again, pale. But I would say that if you're looking at these shades and you're trying to figure out based on you know your skin tone, wherever um, you are, you're gonna wanna realize that none of them are super pigmented. So for example, I'm gonna go into the contour shade. And the contour shade, they have like, uh, it's sculpt and something sculpt and anyway sculpt and something and the contour shade is kind of like the middle shade there's like light and then light medium and then contour and then now I think that it's that the contour shade is supposed to be you know like the cooler shade and they just kept it in kind of the middle um, to indicate that it was a similar type of product. But as you can see, if I, there's not another contour, there's not another shade called contour, there's just this one. So if this is supposed to be the only contour shade um, and the other ones are supposed to be bronzers, then I would say you're gonna have a difficult time if you have a deeper skin tone than I do, which is like practically everyone. However, maybe the, the idea is that you can build these up because I will say that I have played around with it where I've you know tried to put more and more on and you can to a certain extent, but it's not like, you know, it's not like a powder bronzer where you can just continually um, build. So I, I just, you know, I absolutely love them. I think they work extremely well for my uh, skin tone and for my type of skin. I have very dry skin. I'm older. Um, cream products I think work really well. And I, I think they last really long and they look beautiful. But again, um, I'm not sure, you know, like when it comes to like this contour, this is pretty light. So um, now the light and let me make sure what I have it in. The, the ones that are the bronzers, to give you an example, it's sculpted in bronze. This is the light medium. So it goes light, light medium, I think contour, then medium, then medium dark, something like that. So this is the light medium. And when I put this on my skin, it's definitely um, warmer than the contour. But if you look, um, as I blend this out, it's not, you know, it's not deep um, and it's, it doesn't pack a ton of uh, pigment. So I think it would work, but I, you know, it's hard for me to tell because I'm so pale. So that's the only thing I want to caution people about. Um, you're just going to want to, you know, keep that in mind when you're checking out the colors. They look super pigmented, like they look like a lot, I think, deeper when you look at the pan, but when you put it on your skin, 
uh, it shears out pretty quickly. Now, that's not always, like, that's kind of, I think, kind of normal for um, a cream product, but I just want to mention it because, you know, you have to, you have to be, it, it, it's a little tricky to pick out shades. Like this one, this is um, the cranberry shade. This is actually pretty pigmented, um, but like the rose, which is like this pink one, is very, very light. And I'm actually gonna use that on my cheeks today. Kind of in the high points. I'm gonna go up a little like up here with my blush. You can see how quickly that blended out. Um, so just, you know, something to keep in mind when you're looking at the salt products. If you want something um, with a lot of pigment, um, you wanna make sure that you pick one of the the deeper tones because like the rose and stuff are, I think, pretty light. Again, perfect for my skin, love them, but something to keep in mind. And then I'm gonna go in with the pearl highlighter. The pearl highlighter is beautiful and I think should work for pretty much anyone because really it's just a pearlescence. Um, uh, you know, it's like a whitish, well, it's pearlescent. It's an opalescent pearlescent highlighter and I think is it just is beautiful actually uh, it reminds me a little of the Burberry highlighter um, but in cream form the the Burberry is um, powder so that's salt New York again still absolutely in love with it I love the carrying case I think it's awesome the little square, they have ones that are like little squares you can sit, put four in are um, amazing for travel, you know, if we ever do that again. So loving them and I think it makes my skin look really nice and dewy and uh, I don't get to look dewy very often, so I like that. Um, and in regards to Burberry, uh, I am, I have been thinking about picking up some Burberry items because Burberry has been dropping some new things, including a mascara, foundation, um, and, and some lip products. I was gonna wait for the eyeshadow. That's like called the runway eyeshadow or something, but it seems to be available in other countries. It's not available in the US yet. It keeps saying it's coming to the US. So I might just buy the other things and just get them. Um, and then, and when the and when the runway palette's available, I'll get it. But you guys let me know if it's something that you're really interested in seeing or, you know, kind of what your thoughts are because it's been a while and it was supposed to release like, I don't know, two weeks ago or something. It's still not here. I think everybody's just, you know, the shipping lately especially has been bad. Um, I, I've said before, it's been bad all year, but last couple weeks have been a problem. Um, okay. So, Bouquet Ombre by Chanel. This is one that I've shown you, but I have not worn it on my channel. Um, it was a spring release by Chanel and did not come to the United States. The Golden Bloom? Golden Bouquet. Golden Bouquet. I did um, show you guys that one. And you know, it's it's pretty, um, but it's actually not a favorite. Um, so for those of you who really wanted it uh, in the US, I mean, it was fine, but you know, it wasn't great. I think I'm gonna like this one a little bit more. Uh, I think it, I think it looks, I think it looks pretty. Well, we're about to find out. Okay, let's use, I picked up some, um, I picked up some new brushes. Um, some are still on their way. Some are uh, vegan brushes. So this is the Hourglass brush. I have some Ray Morris brushes. I'm gonna have updates soon. I also picked up all of the um, Yano series by Beautylish that they came out with the eye shadow brushes. I didn't get the face ones, but I did get the eye ones. So I'll have an update on those soon. Let's go in with the matte brown shade. Oh, I picked a good sweater. This is actually matchy. Um, look at that. That's actually very pigmented. Um, yeah, I, I kind of went on a 
a bit of a, a spending spree lately. Um, I had mentioned to some friends that I was kind of in this buying mode and then nothing really appealed to me. And then um, <laughs> Bergdorf's had a sale and uh, there was a couple other things that popped up that I wanted. Like I bought some of the, I bought the new Surat uh, eyeshadow palettes. They're not new shades, but they're like, they're new palettes. The way Surat works is you can get the shades independently and make your own palettes. Um, but they, these are already curated for you. And so I picked those up. They should be on their way soon. And in addition to that, I picked up their new brow pomade because I thought that looked kind of interesting. So I'm gonna do a full face of Surratt. I have Surratt foundation and um, lip products and a whole bunch of other things. So I will do a face of Surratt soon, whenever those products get uh, shipped to me. And then I also picked up in um, the Bergdorf sale a whole bunch of new things as well. So yeah. Yeah, I go through these like modes. I don't know if you guys are like this, but like I won't want to pick anything up for like the longest time and then all of a sudden I want to pick everything up. And I'm not sure what it is. Like I don't, it's not, you know, it's just like I, I suddenly, I don't know. I just suddenly I'm like, oh, I need that and that and that. And of course I don't need anything, but you know, I suddenly feel like I need stuff and I really don't, so. But anyway, all that stuff is coming and I will do a haul video. I'm gonna wait until a lot of the stuff is here because I feel like um, if I'm gonna do it, I should, you know, do it all at once. Um, okay, so let's go in with the Sonia G Mini Booster Brush and let's go into the shade here. This is, looks like to be like a satin shade, yeah. And we'll deepen up that outer corner and uh, transition. So it has a little bit more of like uh, a cooler tone than the matte that I just put on. And definitely has more of that satin. Yeah, this one's definitely pigmented. The um, LeBlanc, LeBlanc collection the eyeshadow in that one, I forgot the name, I'll put it down below. That one is not at all pigmented. It's actually very pretty, but it's just, there's just not a lot of pigment to it. So, you know, if you're, if you're somebody who wants a lot of pigment, you're not gonna get it in that palette. All right, let's take what I think is more of like the, the shimmery shade. These shades are very similar on the eye, the difference is like kind of the texture and the finish. So the one I'm putting on now has, again, a cooler undertone and a little bit more shimmer and sparkle than the others. The first one I put on was definitely more of a matte. Second one had more of this cool shade and more of a satin. And this one is more of a cool has a little bit more pink to it and looks more of like a shimmer. Going in with a Refer 02 brush and that cream shade, let's put that up in the brow area. We'll buff that in. I think this would be an all over shade color as well, this cream shade. I think you could get um, like a nice, like lighter look on the eye. I'm gonna put a little bit of it on top of like right in the middle of the eyelid, just kind of to lessen the, um, to kind of lessen the monochromatic look. All right, let's take the Wayne Goss number th three brush and let's just buff that in, starting in like the upper brow area and I'll pull it out a little bit the shades are very pretty and actually very pigmented, but there's not a tremendous amount of color difference between three of the shades. It kind of creates a monochromatic look, which is not necessarily a bad thing, 
but you know, it's not, there's not a tremendous amount of difference between those three. Uh, let's take the satin shade and use it. This is a refer 03 and do lower lash line. If you wanted to break that up, I would suggest um, using the cream shade on the lid itself and then the other, one of the other three shades or all three shades to create a contrast. Because if you use those shades as I did together, um, you get more of that monochromatic look, which might be a look that you're going for. So depends. Okay, so let me bring you in so you can see the look. Um, then we will curl lashes and put on some mess. Okay, so here is the final look. I think um, it has more of a fall vibe than spring one, but maybe that's just me. So let me curl my lashes, we'll put on some mascara. So as I was curling my lashes, I realized this might actually be a good look to add a little bit of liner to. So I wanna use the black wood. Now I mentioned this in a video. Um, this is the Chanel black wood. It is not new, uh, it's been around for a while, but I hadn't owned it before. And the thing about black wood is it's just a very intense black, a uh, brown. So it has like, as the name suggests, a wood-like color, so brown, but it has like a, a black undertone to it. So when you're looking for something that is not as harsh as a black, um, but you want something deep, this is a great shade. And I love these Chanel liners. These are the waterproof liners. They go on really easily. I usually have to hold my lid a little bit because my skin has lost some elasticity now that I'm almost 49 years old. Uh, but the liners go on so smoothly that I don't have to pull a lot, which is great. And I really, really like all of these. These are the waterproof Chanel liners. They are the Stylo U waterproof liners. And I have them in like, I don't even know how many shades, but I, I hope to, I hope to one day have them in every shade because I love them that much. They're fantastic. Um, okay, so let's use um, a mascara that we haven't used in a while. This is the Marc Jacobs At Lashed. And I wanted to bring this back out because I wanted to say I still really enjoy this mascara. Um, and I, I don't, you know, use it all the time um, because there's been some other mascaras to, to try out. But I really do like it. I think it's a, an excellent mascara, um, which I'm going to get all over my eyelids because I always do. But I really like it. I like the wand. I like the formula. I think it gives a beautiful elongated lash. And yeah, I mean, I, I think I really, really like it. So I, I want to pull these things out, you know, as I'm using new products when I can, because I don't, I don't want you guys to think that, you know, I, we're using something, I'm using something, I say I love it and then a new thing comes along and I just never use it again because that is not the case. Um, when I really like something, I am going to continue to use it. It's just there's only so many videos that I do and therefore I'm showing you, you know, the new products that come out. But um, I'm trying to incorporate bringing back older products that I've really liked or when I really don't like something giving you an update on why I don't like it. Uh, I haven't had too many of those. Um, that is probably because, you know, I don't, I don't pick up many random things. I, I tend to stick with brands that I know, um, that I've used for a while. And, you know, so I've, I've had good luck. However, there are some times that, you know, I, I get products that I don't particularly like, and I promise that when that happens, I will let you know. I just haven't really had any uh, lately. The closest we've come uh, is the Chanel LeBlanc eyeshadows, that uh, quad, but it's not that I didn't like it. I actually, I actually think it looks really pretty on me. I just don't think it's gonna be for everybody, that's all. Okay, so mascara is on, eyeshadow is on. I really think this looks really pretty with um, my coloring. I think against my hair, when I put my hair down, 
I think it's gonna look really good um, and I do like it. But like I said, I think it gives a very monochromatic look unless you're using the cream shade on the lid. Those three shades, uh, those amber shades look very similar to one another. And so it's not like there's a difference between them really. There's a slight color difference. One, like they're each a little bit cooler than the other, but really it's about one is a matte, one it seems to me one is a matte, one is a satin, one is a shimmer. Um, when you blend them together, it kind of looks like all one shade. So something to be aware of. All right, let us pull out the powder. So this is the Forever Cushion Powder by Dior. Um, and this is gonna be, like I said, a mini review because I, I'm, I'm, I don't have enough in depth to give you at the moment. But it is in lavender and it comes in this cushion compact with this cushion top. Um, it looks like one of their purses, like my Lady Dior purse. Um, comes like this, like a cushion foundation with a little powder puff, which is, which is cute, I like the powder puff. Um, and then the seal here. So let's go ahead <laughs> and break the seal. It does have a scent. Not sure what that is. Floral. Yeah, floral. It's nice though. It's nothing like that I don't like. Um, okay, it's very pretty. Let's take the FO3 brush. This is a, a Chikahoto brush. And let's tap out some extra powder. Okay, I'm gonna actually sort of stamp this in. So I'm just gonna kinda place it like this. Let's see. I want to see how much like color you're going to get. Are you going to really get the lavender shade? Generally in powder, if you pick something that has like a pink or a lavender, it's just going to give you that light um, sort of inkling of that shade. It's not going to really deposit purple or pink on your face. Um, although I did have a powder once where it it was pink. <laughs> and I was like, well, that is not gonna work. Um, okay, so I'm just going down this area because like I said, my skin is very dry and there's absolutely no reason to put it anywhere else on me. So let's just kind of brush that. Okay, what do you think guys? So I'm not sure what the scent is, but feels nice. I think it looks nice. I'm gonna have to play around with it a little bit and see what I think of it over the day. And also when I think like when I go outside, what it looks like, because the problem is it can make me look a little ghostly um, which it kind of looks like in this light. But again, this is, this is camera lighting. It's different than when you're outside. So we'll have to see, but I think at the moment it actually looks nice in my mirror, but when I look in my camera, it looks a little bit, looks a little ghostly at the moment. One of the things that I find if I do a powder, um, I often go back in with a blush or a bronzer on top because the uh, powder can actually make me look very, very pale. So I think, let's go back in with like a little bit dark, deeper shade of the, of the salt. Let's go and see what, what shade was this one? This is Spice. Spice is a, a little bit deeper in blush and let's put that on over the powder and I think we'll find that, yeah, see it looks better. It makes, see what I mean? If you look here and you look here. On this side, I looked like a little ill <laughs> because I am, you know, when you're very pale, um, 
if you have no color to your cheeks, if you have no bronzer or blush, if you like that look, hey, that, I mean, that's fine. Um, but it, do, it can make you look um, a little stark, especially if you have dark hair. My hair is not particularly dark, but it's, it's not light, it's not blonde. So it helps to have a little bit of color um, in your cheeks, uh, on your face. And I'll go back in with that contour shade a little bit and just kind of deepen that up as well. I think that will, over the powder, look much better. Yeah, I like it. That's good. So we'll see how the powder wears. I would say for me, putting the powder on over a cream, uh, especially like the Salt New York, which is a lighter pigment, as I mentioned, um, is a little too cool for me, a little too light. So I want to put some product over it and use it as either um, a, in a much lighter hand. I, I was doing it a little bit heavier so you guys could see if it looks like, you know, it has a purple cast. Um, or as like a buffing powder and then put the product over it. But it does look very pretty on the skin. Like my skin looks nice and it doesn't look super dry. I mean, it looks nice. It feels nice. It feels actually very comfortable. So that's all good. Okay, uh, we're gonna use the Vive pencil. This is in Rumor, and I mentioned when I did the review of the Vive line, I have not picked up any of the Vive pencils that I really like her line, and that's still true. I think her eyeshadow uh, palette was beautiful. The, the liners are really comfortable. They go on beautifully. I love the shades. I have Rumor. I have Oh, is it Bark? I, I like, I have two or three of them and I really like them. And so I think she did an amazing job for her, uh, for her launch of her line. And I, I really am very impressed and cannot wait to pick up blushes. So I'm going to be doing that soon. Um, okay. So let's now do the Royal Gloss. This is the Shine Lip Plumper. And this, uh, was available on Harrods and Selfridges. And this is, um, it's an interesting product. I have different shades. I'm gonna use the gold today. You can see the gold is more of just a clear kind of gloss. So there it is on the lips. I, I think it's pretty. Like I think it's a pretty gloss. I have it in like this red shade and like a burgundy shade. And I'll show you those if you're interested in them. But what I would say is I don't think it plumps my lips. I mean, you guys let me know. I, I have medium, I guess medium sized lips. I don't know. Um, they're fine. Uh, I always disliked them actually as a kid. I always thought they were way too big. Um, but I've grown more comfortable with them over the years. So, you know, I think they look fine. I don't think it looks plumper necessarily. I think they, it's a pretty shiny gloss, but I'm not really wearing gloss now anyway um, because you know I'm wearing a mask. So it's not something I'm bowled over by. I think they're pretty, but certainly not something I would repurchase. I just think they're pretty and the casing and the packaging is you know really interesting and beautiful, but that's about it. Like I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I have to get that. Very rarely do I love a gloss. Um, Chanel Glossomers, which are now Rouge Coco Gloss, I think. Love those, love the formula of them. The old Tom Ford, before they reformulated, loved those. Those were amazing. Um, the Chantecaille Lip Chics, love those. Those aren't really a gloss, they're like a glossy balm, if you will, but I love those. Um, Pat McGrath, love her glosses, love her glosses. Um, but most of the time I'm just kind of like, oh, uh, Wayne Goss, I really like his glosses. I don't necessarily like the scent. That's just me. I, I think they're, what are they, peppermint or, is it peppermint? I can't remember. But the gloss looks really nice, like really, really beautiful on the lips. So I love the gloss, I'm not a huge fan of the scent. Um, there's a couple of glosses where I'm just like, oh, I really love that. But for the most part, I don't know, gloss to me, it has to be like, 
really impressive and I don't come across too many where I'm just like bowled over um, and this is this is not one of them so okay guys so that I think is it for the mini reviews and updates um, for the mini reviews the Christian Dior powder I really like it I think it looks nice it feels good um, it gives a beautiful I think a beautiful finish uh, I just need to be careful because I went in a little heavy-handed so you guys could kind of see you know how it looked uh, and it kind of made me look a little ghostly so I need to just keep it light or put product on over it which is fine because it actually feels it's not drying it's not settling into lines which is actually the reason I don't generally like powder so um, the Dolce Gabbana Royal Gloss I, I mean it's fine I'm not a huge fan but it's okay the uh, golden, no, the uh, bouquet ombre, is that what it is? The Chanel bouquet ombre. Um, I like it on me. I think it's a really good color story for me because of my coloring. But I think those three shades just look very monochromatic. So again, for how much you're paying for it, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's worth it. Am I glad to have it? Yeah, because I actually think it looks really good on me, but it kind of reminds me a little bit of Mitza in Dior, but that one has a lot more um, complexity and you can do a lot more with it. So if I was going to go with a color story that I really like, it looks like this, I'd still go with the Dior one. Uh, the Christian Dior Prestige uh, Foundation, Cushion Foundation Update. I really like it. I really like it on my skin. I think it looks really nice. It feels good. Uh, it wears really well. Uh, but I gave you my my cons to that. Blackwood liner from Chanel. Love, love, love. The Vive liner, uh, lip liner is awesome. Love that. And I'm really enjoying those. I'm going to actually pick up the entire lipstick, the entire um, lip liner line. I think I have three of them. I think there's three others and I'll be getting some blushes soon. I think that's it. Oh, mascara, the Atlash mascara. I still really like it. Uh, I think it's a great mascara. I think it looks really good on. It's actually one of my, it's definitely one of my top 10. So, um, okay, Salt New York, love Salt New York. Uh, yeah, that's my update. And those are my reviews, my mini reviews. I'll have more on the Christian Dior. I'm gonna be doing a full Christian Dior uh, video when I pick up, I'm going to get some new liners, some new lipsticks. Um, when the powder comes out, there's a couple of other things that I'm going to be picking up from them. Plus, they have their whole spring line launching or summer line in April, which is like next month. I feel like I just got the spring line. Anyway, uh, so that there'll be more to come on that. And I'll make sure I'll, I'll, I'll give you updates. So I think that's it, guys. That's it. Uh, just a quick update about giveaways. So this is, as I said, my year anniversary month. Uh, I've already put up the giveaway for um, Chantecaille. The Chanel giveaway will be going up soon. The Tom Ford giveaway will be going up soon. The what, Dior giveaway will be going up soon. There's a very big giveaway at the end of the month. The product that I'm going to be giving away at the end of the month is something that I have talked about that I love that I've been using for years well several years since it came out and I absolutely stand behind it a million percent uh, but it is a big it's a it's a it's a big ticket item and it's gonna be at the end of the month um, that I'm gonna be giving away the reason that it's basically most of it's gonna be US and Canada there's one that I'm gonna try to do that will be a little beyond that is because I have the products in hand so I'll be the one doing the shipping and from what I understand, at least what I'm being told, I can't really get a guarantee that it will get to you <laughs> if it's outside of the US and Canada. It probably would get to you, but I don't have a time frame. I don't know, it could be months. Uh, and so I just, what I don't wanna do is try to ship something to someone and then it never gets to you. Or it gets to you and it takes two months um, or and it's damaged. That's where we're at right now, unfortunately with circumstances the way they are. So hopefully uh, by the time I hit my 10,000 subscribers and I do like another huge giveaway, we won't have to deal with any of this. But in the meantime, uh, I'm doing the best I can. And so the predominant amount 
of giveaways this month um, will be US and Canada. Like I said, I'm, there's one that I think I can do that's gonna be on that, be beyond that, um, and I'll give you the rules for that when I do it. Uh, okay, that is it. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you in another video really soon.